Hey guys, let's start with new chapter of Loyal Pin Volume 2, Chapter 34, Miniature Horses. Auntie Dank, the Lantita greeted the head cook of Pretty Ferrom Palace, who was busy preparing various types of breakfast, for she had received orders from Lady Pin that all the overlords who had come to stay at the palace on this occasion, some of them liked Western breakfast such as bread, fried eggs, fried sausage, baked beans, grilled mushrooms or bacon. Some prefer Thai breakfast, while others prefer only hot black coffee or a glass of orange juice. Auntie Deng solved the problem by forcing all the servants to prepare everything thoroughly. Yes, Lady Pen, Auntie Deng answered her name, took her hands off preparing to cook shrimp porridge for Princess Anil, and then walked quickly towards Lady Pen. Uh, you don't need to prepare the shrimp porridge, Auntie Deng. I'll make it myself. Yes, Lady Pen. Lady Pen nodded quickly with a respectful gesture. Fortunately, you entered the kitchen in time. Otherwise, Princess Anil might become angry at me if the porridge does not taste as to her preference. Princess Anil has never been angry with anyone. If the food doesn't satisfy her, she'll eat little or even not eat. Lantita proudly smiled, saying that Princess Anil enjoyed her rice porridge until she ate the whole bowl every time. She is very different from when she was young. At that time, when she came to stay at Hua Hin, she loved to eat a lot of snacks that I prepared all the time. Auntie Deng smiled until her face wrinkled as she called her past when the king and Prince Alisa took Princess Anil to relax during the summer break in Hua Hin. That's, I used to wonder about this as well. Lady Pen responded the head cook's conversation while seasoning the rice porridge. By the way, have you finished preparing food for the other overlords? There are still poached eggs left. I intend to start poaching them a little later. By the way, where's Brick? Why didn't she come to help in the kitchen? Did you see her? Brick went for a walk on the beach with Princess Anil early this morning, Lady Pen. Did Princess Anil awake? Palantita's pretty eyebrows frowned. She sneaked out of Princess Anil's attic bedroom before dawn. And when she arrived at the bedroom, Brick was still sprawled out on the floor, fast asleep on the mattress that was next to her bed. But when she woke up in the morning, she woke up early in the morning, stopped by to hug, kiss and shake my sagging arm for a while. Auntie Dang widely smiled when she mentioned Princess Anil's behaviour that Palantita herself did not expect. Shockingly, she almost felt jealous the first time she heard that Princess Anil hugging and kissing Auntie Dang. Nevertheless, when Palantita considered it carefully, she suddenly regained some consciousness because Auntie Dang was an old, plump, white woman in her late sixties and a kind, smiling face when makes her trustfully curdly. When she saw Brick walking into the kitchen, Princess Anil dragged Brick to run in a race on the beach. I saw them running here and there until now, but they still haven't returned. Palantita exhaled. Then she began to be unsure of Princess Anil's gesture that Auntie Dang had just mentioned was referring to little Princess Anil from seven or eight years ago. Or Princess Anil, who is full of hot charm and just had a passionate love story with her last night. Then you may have to reheat the rice porridge before she eats, Palantita said as she finished preparing shrimp porridge for Princess Anil. Once she is out and having fun like this, by the time she comes back, it will probably be late. Yes, Lady Pen. Auntie Deng answered while laughing. Palantita raised her head to look for someone. By ensuring that person was not in her sight at this time, she chose to walk down the beach, considering it was so early in the morning. Palantita walked along the path she had walked with the princess yesterday afternoon. She walked far away from the palace and began to worry that she might have chosen the wrong direction. In the second, she almost gave up. Palantita's eyes saw Princess Anil walking towards her with a very cheerful face, with a dark brown miniature horse with a large white stripe on its body. Strangely, the miniature horse Princess Anil was leading had Brick sitting on its back with a stiff gesture. But that face was bright and her laughter unstopped. Palantita stood there stunned. She didn't know what to say to the two people in this situation. Khun Pen, it was Princess Anil who talked first. Are you looking for me and Prick? 
You know this very well. Katy Penn raised her hands and crossed her arms over her chest. She glanced into her surly eyes and looked at Rick on the horse in displeasure. You like to play mischievously. Riding a miniature horse is mischievous, Princess Anil said with a laugh. Everyone who comes to Hua Hin must ride a pony to see the beach. Right, Rick? Rick accidentally rolled her eyes when she noticed that suddenly Princess Anil was passing the buck to her. If Rick refused to accept her words, she feared that she would appear disobedient and disloyal to her overlord. Hence, when Pick stubbornly looked, Lady Pen's eyes were very cranky at this time, or maybe she wouldn't have a place to sleep tonight. It's not like every hun has to ride, my princess. Finally, Pick found a solution. But I stubbornly want to ride a horse. So Princess Anil then indulged and rented me a horse to ride. Then why didn't you let the horse owner lead the horse? Lantita nodded towards the middle-aged man, dark with sun-kissed skin, walking behind them at a distance. Uh, I want to lead the horse myself. Don't blame Prick. Lady Pen heard this and pursed her lips in displeasure. Seeing the overlord taking sides with her servant like this, she couldn't help but think back to when they sneaked out to go to temple festival. These two people got along so well that she felt neglected then. What about this? Prick has been riding a horse for a while and has gotten bored. Would you like to try riding it in her place, Kunpin? Prick burst her eyes to look at Princess Anil, looking in amazement. She wanted to shout and tell Princess Anil that she wasn't tired of riding. Nevertheless, she could only slowly get off the horseback obediently. No, I didn't dare to ride. Valentita shook her head rapidly. Please try it. You can come down if you don't like it. Princess Anil's voice was very bleeding, which made Valentita couldn't resist Princess Anil's eyes and behavior. So she had to get on the horse reluctantly. In contrast, the horse owner helped lift her to go up quickly. As for Prick, here's your snack money to take the horse owner to sit far away on the other side while Kun Pen and I will walk for a bit. And then we'll be back. No need to follow me. Brilliant. Prick gritted her teeth slightly, but her eyes lit up when she saw the large banknote. She grabbed the wrist of the horse owner and quickly headed towards the hawker selling grilled eggs sitting under a coconut tree. Anil is so sly, Lantita muttered. Isn't it good? So we can be together? Princess Anil said, giggling. Horse is sitting on the horse? Well, it's not as scary as I thought. Lantita smiled softly before shyly using her hand to brush her shiny black hair. Right now, she was both excited and fed like a princess protected by a brave knight. Kunpin's hand are exquisite, Princess Anil said when she looked at the delicate small hand that now seemed to shine with the sparkle of a beautiful diamond on the ring. The ring is also beautiful. Huh? Valentita pretended to laugh in her throat even though her sweet, pretty face was red like ripe tomato at this time. Who gave it to you? Princess Anil joyfully asked. Uh, I don't know. Maybe someone here? Lady Pilantita replied with a sweet voice. At that moment, she was the one who smiled at Princess Anil. Her expression on the borderline between shyness and a desire to tempt and tease. Really? Princess Anil smiled. I thought it was your engagement ring. It's more than engagement. Pilantita continued to respond despite her heart beating rapidly and her face was red like someone with a fever. What do you mean by more than engagement? Be a friend, be an older sibling, be a younger sibling. More importantly, she owns me both physically and mentally. Kun Pranath? Yes, Kun Pran. Have you seen Princess Anil? Auntie Dang has just prepared Princess Anil's favorite snack. So I would like her to be able to devour them. This is the second time of today Pilantita had to look for Princess Anil chaotically. Yes, I saw. Princess Anil was playing, digging a hole in the sand and burying Prick over there. Pranod smiled while until his eyes closed and motioned for Lady Pen to look towards the beach. The young man was delighted that Lady Pilantita was the first to ask him questions. But Lady Pen looked, passed the smile towards Princess Anil as if Pranod was here. Pilantita walked straight to where that couple was playing in the sand without hesitation. 
She's fed up and shook her head as soon as she saw Rick's current condition with her own two eyes. Rick's body was in the sand, only her head was sticking out, while her thick, large body was in a massive pile of sand. Princess Anel dressed casually and constantly scooped the sand up to cover without getting bored. Moreover, Princess Anel had a plate with cucumbers and tomatoes on her side. She intends to carefully place the thin slices of cucumber into Frick's eye sockets in an extremely gentle manner. Princess Anel? Lantata's stern tone immediately made Princess Anel freeze her hands, while Frick was started until she threw up the sand piled up on top of her body, cracked and fell into pieces. Uh, yes, Kunpin? The next moment, Princess Anel turned and smiled at Lady Pim as if nothing had happened. Do you want to try playing in the sand with us? No. Elantita raised her hands and crossed her arms over her chest defiantly. I'm a grown woman, not a child. Oops! Princess Anil laughed loudly without showing the slightest sign of remorse. Rick, Kunpin scolded you for acting like a child. Rick could only roll her eyes like a helpless person. For what could she say when she was a tool for teasing Lady Pim? She must play along. What's wrong with being a child, my lady? Having too much stress will cause you to grow old and die quickly. Rick spoke cajolingly and responded to Pilantita like a witted person. Nevertheless, Lady Pin didn't think it was funny. I don't want to talk to you anymore, Pilantita said to Rick nevertheless. Glanced her moody and displeased eyes, drifted towards Princess Anil, who just couldn't stop laughing. Hurry! and take Rick's overlaw to wash her hands thoroughly because Auntie Dang made a tray of taro taco for her favourite dessert. Yes, my lady, she was solemn when she saw Lady Pim refuse to tease and play with her as usual. Rick could only awkwardly bow her head and obey Lady Pim's orders, even though she had a slight objection in her heart when wet sand covered her whole body. Lady Pim didn't seem at all interested in telling her to wash herself with concern. Nevertheless, when Princess Anil's beautiful hands were just a little bit of sand, Lady Pin was very concerned. Since time immemorial, Rick's lady has been very biased. Don't be late. I'll be waiting at the table in the garden. Sir, yes sir, Rick saluted like a western soldier, as Princess Anil had taught her several days before. Lantata's eyes widened before she turned to glare at the protagonist, who kept smiling and showing off her dimples. Lady Pen begins to unsure whether Princess Anil, whom you are staring at right in front of her, is her lover or her youngest daughter. In the evening, when the sky turned dark blue, the halls of Ridiferum Palace were still lit with the same soft yellow light as the night before. The sound of international music from a high-quality record player wafted sweetly, emanating as far as the beach. Lord Koa sat behind Pilantita still trying to talk with the young women who kept quiet and always raised her head to look for someone. Sister, the young man said in sweet voice, can you dance with me? I don't want to dance. Pilantita's expressions were still. She kept gazing at the waves that rolled and hit the shore with a steady rhythm as if she was sitting alone without people around her. Then, can I sit to accompany you and wait for dinner? Lord Kua flashed a smile that he understood was overflowing with charm. Nevertheless, Pilantita didn't even glance at him. Unknowingly, Pilantita suddenly raised her left hand and brushed her hair simply. The sparkle of that beautiful diamond had pierced Lord Kua's eyes so much that he had to turn around and look again. His own eyes revealed a beautiful diamond ring with a simple and elegant western design possesses. Lady Pilantita's left ring finger. Lord Kua immediately recalled the old story and asked whether he had seen this ring. The answer is no. The young man was sure he couldn't be careless and not notice that Lady Pilantita was reserved. He took advantage of Lord Lady Pin and begged her to walk on the beach together last night. Why didn't he notice this beautiful diamond ring at that time? So do we have to wait for Anil? Anan? After dancing together, it was long past dinner time. Prince Anantavat finally asked Prince Anand, Looks like everyone is starting to get hungry. Probably no need to wait, brother.
just now i just went to look at the beach and saw anil still having fun using a bucket to catch wind crabs ha ah, anil is naughty like a child the grand prince let out a long exhale but there was a spark of affection in his eyes as usual for his favorite sister meanwhile elisara and choing pa seemed very disappointed that they wouldn't have the opportunity to have dinner with princess anil in the evening aunty dang When Anil brings back the wind crab bucket, would you help to make better fried wind crab for her? After hearing the grand prince, who was still concerned about his younger sister, speak to Auntie Dang, the head cook, Elantita still felt conflicted. Why didn't the grand prince use his power to force the stubborn child to return for dinner on time? If it were not for the fact that today she was the one searching for Princess Anil. who played the role of little princess anil almost all day long lady plantita must have rushed down to fetch princess anil and prick to come up to have dinner right now but just thinking about it in reality plantita was only wasting time with her thoughts that prick could have this much influence and interfere with the honeymoon time of the newly married couple until now will she be able to call prick princess anil's slave wife That's it for this chapter guys and I'll see you tomorrow with next chapter chapter 35